The universe is approximately 14 billion years old. According to the theory most accepted, everything started with the Big Bang, a huge explosion that created the universe as we know it. We are here on a small blue speck, floating on one arm of a galaxy. Our planet is approximately four billion years old. Man has always marveled at this universe around him, trying to understand it. We share the planet with various other animal species. Insects. Mammals. A ciência é uma atividade do homem através da qual ele procura entender a natureza, o universo que se esconda. Somos provavelmente uma das espécies mais recentes do planeta, mas provavelmente somos a única espécie que tem essa preocupação de entender a natureza e o universo. Our species, Homo sapiens sapiens, has been on the planet for approximately 200,000 years. The large apes have been here for 60 million years. The mosquitoes and other insects have been here for 560 million years. To survive on this planet, we have always had to face various obstacles, such as hunger, large predators, and principally small enemies. The microorganisms and the viruses for a long time invisible to us. Many of these microorganisms and viruses were the cause of disease. Often leading to the death of the victim. With man's desire to understand and explain nature, science appeared. The first attempts to explain natural phenomena, such as disease, cataclysms and death, were through the supernatural, the divine. And the central figure who interpreted the divine wishes was the witch doctor, the shaman. As interpreter of the will of the gods, he had exceptional and unquestionable power. Demanding
total submission. This system inhibited questioning. The supernatural explained all. As the years passed, various cultures gave names and personalities to nature's phenomena. In ancient Greece, thunderbolts were sent by Zeus. And for the Nordic people, Thor created thunder and lightning with his hammer. Various civilizations grew, perpetuating this type of thought. Some religions practiced human sacrifice as a way of placating the anger of the gods. At the same time, another form of thinking arose, based on go, no go, or trial and error. This came from the artisans. They were not interested in an explanation of why something worked, so long as it worked. Hitting stone on stone, they produced cutting instruments that helped in the hunt. By manipulating clay, they created utensils for storing grain. Origins of what we understand today as art, music or dance could also have come from these practices. Thanks to the artisan's thinking process, tools were invented that could be used in the building of the pyramids, palaces and sculptures. There had been religious thinking, and there had been practical thinking. And so it was that in 700 BC, Greece produced the philosophers. They believed that not everything had divine origins, that some phenomena could be explained by logic and by observation. One example of this new way of thinking was Aristoteles. Aristoteles observed nature, trying to explain the phenomena based on logic. On observing the ships as they came nearer to the ports, he noticed that their masts became taller and the sails grew in size before the rest of the ship started to appear. Also, when observing an eclipse of the moon and using logic, he concluded that the earth is round. He was also interested in anatomy and is considered one of the fathers of comparative anatomy. As it was not possible to dissect humans, he dissected animals. Dissecting a dolphin, he noticed that it had a placenta. With this observation, he concluded that dolphins were more similar to mammals than to fish. It was the first description of a marine mammal. Hippocrates, who is considered the father of medicine, disagreed that all disease was of divine origin. Illness is not a punishment. At the same time that philosophical thinking was blossoming, a strong humanist movement was arising in Greece, expressed in poetry, in the theatre and in the arts in general. Works such as the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer, Antigone, Electra and Oedipus Rex by Sophocles and various other classical works have withstood the test of time and are still read today principally for their aesthetic value. Que fenômeno esse que de repente surge de um grupo limitado do planeta onde um grupo de homens desenvolve uma maneira diferente de pensar e depois essa nova forma de pensar lentamente se propaga pelo planeta e muda a maneira de ser do homem. Exemplos é demais. Na Índia, milênios atrás, foram escritos os primeiros livros de matemática. Na China, foi onde se inventou a, o papel e a imprensa. E mais tarde, 
nas ilhas gregas, surgiu esse grupo de homens tão curiosos e interessantes que chamavam-se os filósofos. Foram os primeiros a achar que havia algo diferente, que não era tudo Deus. Os pensamentos lógicos eram fundamentais. Mas não foi só isso. Trouxeram um componente humanístico enorme. Teatro, poesia, dramaturgia. Isso tudo propagou-se lentamente para Roma e daí para o mundo inteiro. E, de, forma, de uma certa forma, mudou a maneira de ser e de pensar do homem.